Hello viewers, in the last session we learnt about removable singularities. Okay. So, a couple of uh, comments uh, are in order. Uh, firstly, that uh, we can redefine the function. So, uh, recall what a removable singularity is. Uh, it is such a singularity of a function of an uh, function analytic function in the neighborhood that uh, there is an extension of that function to an analytic function at the singularity itself. Okay. So, uh, last time we showed a theorem that limit uh, z goes to a. So, under the assumption that a is a removable singularity of a function f, if limit z goes to a z minus a f of z is equal to 0. Okay. So, this is if and only if f uh, has a removable singularity. at uh, a. Okay. So, recall what that means, it means that there is an analytic extension of f uh, at the point a. Okay. So, often we will, uh, we will whenever there is a removable singularity, uh, uh, we will say that we will remove the singularity at uh, a for f. What that will mean is that we will consider the extended function. Okay. So, this kind of singularity is a fake singularity, because all that is lacking is information of the uh, value of f at a. Okay. So, by the theorem that we proved last time, this is the theorem that we proved last time, uh, I mean uh, briefly stating. Okay. So, uh, what we have is that now in retrospect limit z goes to a f of z exists. Okay. If f has a removable singularity at f, a removable singularity at a. Okay, I'll use a shortcut at a. Uh, sing means singularity. Okay, and then uh, what we have is g of z is equal to f of z in a certain. Okay, for z belongs to uh, B A R. and uh, it is equal to limit as z goes to a f of z if z is equal to a. Okay. So, that is your um, redefinition of f. Okay. So, so, this g is now analytic on last time we proved that this is analytic on b a r. So, uh, we did not re exactly prove this, but uh, uh, in retrospect this exists. Okay, if and only if this limit exists. So, in retrospect we can define uh, g of z to be this at z equals a and so uh, that g of z is going to be analytic uh, on b a r. All right. so, um, uh, so, often we will okay, often we will write uh, this this g okay, as um, okay, or I will say that often we will write g um, of a as f of a f of a okay, and uh, call uh, g to be the uh, function f with the singularity at a removed. Okay. So, we will say that the singularity at a has been removed okay, uh, of f has been removed and the new function with uh, f of a uh, as g of a uh, is the extended function. Okay. So, this is a uh, piece of notation if you will or uh, language. Okay. So, next uh, we will consider the other kind of singularities namely uh, uh, poles. Okay. So, uh, recall in the examples that I gave in the last session, there was a case where, um, where the, the, the modulus of the function in a small neighborhood uh, around the singularity was tending to infinity as the, the uh, z the variable approaches the singularity. 
Okay. So, this is a condition we will uh, uh, use to make a definition of a pole. Okay. So, let uh, let f be analytic on B prime A R. Okay. So, with limit z goes to a. So, it is analytic in a punctured neighborhood of a, but when you consider the limit as z goes to a of f of z that is infinity. Okay. So, recall what that means, it means that the modulus of f uh, is arbitrarily large uh, in, uh, in a, a small neighborhood okay. and it is it's large for every value of z in an ar arbitrary uh, arbitrarily small neighborhood. Okay. So, um, so what this means recall uh, limits as uh, limits tending to infinity okay. what that means is that um, modulus of f of z is greater than okay. so given m positive okay, there exists a delta positive such that modulus of f of z is strictly greater than m uh, for um, every z belongs to b b prime of a delta okay so that's what this means okay so um, that's true for every m so given any m positive we can do this so uh, that's your limit of f tending to uh, infinity okay so by this very definition picking m to be uh, m to be uh, 1 let us say we can say that uh, there is a delta such that modulus of f is not 0 in that delta neighborhood of a. Okay. So, uh, there exists a there exists a delta 1 okay, such that f is non 0 in b prime a delta 1 simply picking m equals 1 for example, gives this delta 1. Okay. So, um, g of z defined as 1 by f of z, let us notice the behavior of g okay, uh, is defined at least is defined in uh, b prime of a delta 1. Not only that, um, g uh, is defined not only in b prime of a delta 1, but at a uh, we will notice that g has a removable singularity, g defined this way has a removable singularity. Okay. So, uh, g has the singularity of g okay, is defined in this and uh, I should also say and is analytic there in b prime a delta 1 okay. because it is 1 by an analytic function it is also analytic. Okay. So, the singularity of, uh, of g at a is removable that is because uh, our favorite condition limit z goes to a uh, z minus a times g of z let us notice what that is that is um, that is equal to uh, 0 because uh, 1 by f of z is arbitrarily large in modulus and uh, uh, sorry f of z is arbitrarily large in modulus. So, 1 by f of z is very small in modulus and so is the modulus of z minus a. So, in modulus z minus a times 1 by f of z uh, tends to 0. So, in modulus when some quantity tends to 0 you can conclude that the uh, complex quantity itself tends to 0. Okay. So, um, so that is uh, that is why limit z goes to a z minus a g of z is 0. So, uh, and also notice that since uh, 1 by f of z itself tends to 0 in modulus uh, limit of g as z goes to a is actually equal to 0. Okay. So, we can redefine g at uh, we can remove the singularity of g at a and define g of a to be 0. Okay. So, that is the value of the limit as z goes to a of g of z. Okay. So, uh, so we can define okay. so, uh, g has an analytic extension okay, uh, with g of a is equal to 0. Okay. So, notice that I am 
not giving a new name to the analytic extension, I am not calling it some h, I am once again calling the analytic extension also as g like uh, you know uh, like I said in the remark above. Okay. So, g has an analytic extension with g of a is equal to 0, okay. that is uh, since limit z goes to a uh, g of z is equal to I will write below sorry limit z goes to a g of z. g of z is equal to limit z goes to a uh, 1 by f of z. Okay. And in modulus uh, f of z is arbitrarily large in every neighborhood, I mean for every point in a neighborhood. Okay. So, this tends to 0 in modulus uh, this quantity. So, this is equal to 0. Okay. So, we redefine that to be that okay. and g is like that. So, now, the extended function g which are which we are still calling it g okay, has a 0 at a okay, uh, from uh, the study of zeros of analytic function uh, from earlier sessions. We know that uh, it has to have the 0 of g at a has to have some order. Okay. So, by, uh, by uh, Taylor's theorem, okay. uh, so by Taylor's theorem and its conclusions by Taylor's theorem, okay. uh, we can write uh, g of z is equal to uh, z minus a power k g 1 of z okay, uh, for every z belongs to b a. I okay. will have to change this delta to some delta 2. Okay. So, because Taylor's theorem is a local theorem. Okay. So, the Taylor's expansion for g, g is an analytic function now, uh, Taylor's expansion for g around a uh, is valid in some delta 2 neighborhood of a okay. and uh, g has a 0 at a. So, we can pull out a factor z minus a power k uh, from g okay, uh, with, with g 1 uh, of a not equal to 0. Okay, uh, i.e., g has a zero of order k at a. Okay, this this is something we know from earlier. Okay, so uh, g one of a is uh, non-zero. So what we can do is uh, we can now substitute what g of z is. Okay, uh, one by f of z is equal to z minus a power k g one of z for every z belongs to notice I am deleting a itself because f has a singularity at a. Okay. So, in b prime of a delta 2 okay. and so g 1 of z now okay, or I will say uh, f of z times z minus a power k is equal to 1 by g 1 of z. Okay. Once again for every z belongs to b prime a delta 2. Okay. So, when I take the limit as z goes to a, I can take the limit of this quantity on the left hand side that is equal to the limit as z goes to a 1 by g 1 of z. Uh, oh, uh, I probably should have remarked that uh, with g 1 of a not equal to 0 and g 1 analytic on b a delta 2. Okay. So, I will need that because analyticity gives me continuity of g 1. So, this is equal to 1 by g 1 of a and g 1 of a is non 0. Uh, so, 1 by g 1 of a is also a non 0 complex number. So, the limit as z goes to a of f of z times z minus a power k is a non 0 quantity like this. Okay. So, that is the conclusion uh, we draw okay. and uh, notice that um, if if alpha is greater than k, okay, then limit z goes to a f of z times z minus a power alpha is equal to limit z goes to a z minus a power alpha is greater than k. So, I can subtract a k and then limit z goes to a f of z times z minus a power k. 
Okay. So, this quantity is a, a finite complex number and this quantity is 0. So, this is equal to 0. Also, if alpha is less than k, if alpha is strictly less than k, limit z goes to a f of z times z minus a power uh, alpha okay, can be written as limit as z goes to a. Well, yeah, uh, f of z times z minus a power k divided by z minus a power uh, k minus alpha, which is positive k minus alpha is positive. So, we have a uh, we have a term tending to a non zero complex number in the numerator okay, a finite complex number and the denominator we know uh, blows up in modulus it, it has a very large modulus as z goes to a. So, this is this limit is equal to infinity. Okay. So, we have a tie at k Okay, so, that is the situation f of z times z minus a power alpha is non zero at alpha equals k okay. and for alpha less than k it is uh, the limit is infinity and for alpha greater than k uh, we have uh, uh, limit is 0. Okay. So, this is the dividing point. So, I am looking at the limit as z goes to a of z minus a power alpha f of z for an integer alpha as alpha varies alpha is equal to k is the dividing point at this point this limit is this limit is uh, uh, non zero some finite complex number okay and for every alpha greater than k this is uh, this is zero okay this limit is zero and then for every alpha less than k uh, this is uh, infinity this this limit is infinity okay so there's a, a neat divide like that uh, for this limit. So, uh, what we will say is that we say okay, in this case we say we say that f has a pole of order k at a. Okay. So, uh, so let me allow me to go back. So, if 1 by f of if 1 by f of z has I mean uh, it has a removable singularity at a and if 1 by f of z with its extension uh, has a 0 of order k at a then uh, we say that f has a pole of order k at a. Okay. So, uh, so that is uh, that is pole of order k. So, we have a order for a pole okay. not only that if the limit as z goes to a of z minus a power m it the, the, the condition goes other way around um, power m of f of z is non zero if if this happens okay then f will have a pole of order m at uh, a okay so so it's an if and only if condition if this limit exists and is non zero then uh, f will have a pole of order Okay, uh, k or m whatever that constant is at a okay. and if it has a pole of order uh, k or m uh, then uh, that limit accordingly uh, will be non zero. Okay. So, if so I am trying to show the other direction I will give a heuristic proof if limit z goes to a z minus a power m f of z is non zero let us call it d it is some d not equal to 0 what I will show is f has a pole at uh, a of order m. Okay. So, if that happens then um, then what happens to uh, z minus a power m f of z in a neighborhood in a small neighborhood of a uh, this is equal to uh, d plus some w okay, uh, very uh, w is a, a complex number with very small modulus where uh, for first I should write for for z belongs to uh, b prime a delta okay, delta small okay, and w has a small modulus. Okay, so, that is what limit means anyway. 
Okay. So, the modulus of z minus a power m f of z uh, is between d plus epsilon is, is between the modulus of d plus epsilon and the modulus of d minus epsilon okay. uh, and so uh, I can I can make this kind of statement. Okay. So, given an epsilon I can do that. So, I can make the statement. Okay. So, um, approximately the modulus of the right hand side is close to w, uh, d the modulus of d. Okay. So, so uh, in order to compensate the modulus of the left hand side uh, is growing smaller and smaller as z approaches a. So, uh, the modulus of f has to compensate for the loss. Okay. So, the modulus of f has to go up. Okay. So, f of z is equal to d plus w by z minus a power m. Okay. So, this modulus stays closer to d it is a finite quantity and this is becoming arbitrarily small. Okay. So, uh, as a limit as uh, a tends z tends to a. Okay. So, the limit as z tends to a f of z has to be arbitrarily large. Okay. So, limit as z tends to a f of z is equal to limit as z tends to a d plus w. W is not a fixed quantity it also varies as z tends to a, but it stays close to uh, 0. Okay. So, uh, z minus a power m. Okay. W the, the limit of w uh, really is 0. Okay. So, then uh, we get this. Okay. So, uh, so it is a heuristic proof that is not really proof I mean we can work out using the uh, limit definition. Okay. So, this this implies that f uh, okay, f has a pole at a of order m. Okay, so, in conclusion we have that limit z goes to a z minus a power m or k let me say k of f of z is non 0 if and only if f has a pole of order k at a. Okay, so, this is the conclusion. Okay, so, this is uh, neat and useful okay. and then um, here is a quick example. So, let us consider z sin z the function f equals z sin z. Okay. So, uh, we know that um, z sin z has a simple zeros at k pi k not equal to 0. Okay. So, if we consider 1 by z sin z, okay, uh, this has uh, then has, has a, a pole of order 1. Okay, so, I am going in the opposite direction here. Uh, I am looking at the function g and looking then at the function f. So, 1 by z sin z has a pole of order 1 at any k pi at any k pi k not equal to 0. If k is equal to 0 you are looking at z equals 0 okay, then z is 0 and sin z is 0 as well. So, z sin z has a 0 of order 2 at uh, uh, at z equals 0 that can also be inferred from uh, the uh, Taylor's expansion of uh, sin z. This is equal to z times uh, z minus z cube by 3 factorial plus z power 5 by 5 factorial etcetera. That is the Taylor's expansion for sin z. This is equal to z squared minus z power 4 by 3 factorial etcetera. So, you can factor out a z. I could have done that okay, earlier 1 minus etcetera. So, z sin z has a uh, a 0 of order 2 at uh, at 0. Okay. So, then 1 by z sin z has a pole of order 2 at. So, it is a simple minded example of a pole. So, um, poles and zeros okay, uh, work in mutually opposite ways uh, like we have seen. Uh, if f has a pole then uh, 1 by f has a 0 okay, at, at, an, uh, at a point a. 
okay and then uh, by the time in it has a removable singularity and once you remove the singularity uh, uh, there is a pole uh, there is a zero of 1 by f so uh, so what we can uh, state is the following okay so here is a, a simple proposition um, it's sort of the cancelling behavior of zeros and poles let f be let f and g be analytic i'll say let f and i need different domains so i'll say this differently let f be analytic in uh, b a r okay um, and let f have a 0 of order uh, m at a. Okay. Uh, let g be analytic in b prime a r and let g have a pole of order n at a. Case 1, if m is greater than n, then f times g has a 0 of order m minus n at a case 2 if m is less than n then f times g has a pole of order n minus m at a ok so they sort of cancel each other so if the poles order is more then pole dominates and then there is a pole of order n minus m there ok and then in the third case if f m is equal to n, then f times g has a removable singularity and it can be removed ok, removable singularity at a. So, these are the three cases. So, this is how the pole and 0 uh, cancel uh, each other ok. So, uh, that is a simple proposition and uh, the proof is pretty straightforward using what we have already done. Okay. So, uh, the viewer uh, can uh, provide the proof as an exercise just to uh, revisit all the facts that we have uh, we have proved earlier. Okay. So, uh, next uh, I want to uh, consider uh, the other kind of singularities. Okay. So, before I do that, um, okay, let us consider the following okay, uh, to arrive at the other kind of singularities, what other behavior can f exhibit around a singularity. Okay. So, if f is analytic in b prime of a r, we have seen that f could actually be analytic in all of b a r, it can be extended to be an analytic function at a. Uh, which is uh, the case when A is a removable singularity okay. and then f could have a pole at A okay. uh, in which case uh, well uh, by definition limit z goes to A f of z is infinity okay. and then we have seen its behavior. Now, uh, we will consider what other behavior could it have at uh, in the neighborhood of A. Let us consider the following two uh, equations first or limits first limit z goes to a modulus of z minus a power alpha times modulus of f of z is equal to 0 and limit z goes to a modulus of z minus a power alpha modulus of f of z is equal to infinity. Okay. At least in the case of a pole we have seen that there was a, a dividing point okay, which was the order of the um, of the pole. Okay. So, the value of alpha for which um, one held was uh, any alpha less than k uh, sorry greater than k and the value of uh, alpha for which this equation 2 held was anything uh, less than k, where k is the order of that pole. Okay. So, uh, we will 
we, we will examine these two uh, more closely. Let us first suppose that, uh, suppose 1 holds for some alpha. So, given a function f, suppose 1 holds for some alpha. Okay, here, we are un working under the con uh, condi uh, or, uh, supposition that f is analytic in B prime A r for some r positive okay. and suppose 1 holds for some alpha, okay. then it holds because the limit is 0. So, you can jack up the power alpha as much as you wish uh, and uh, the limit z goes to a of modulus of z minus a power alpha f of z in, mod in modulus will be equal to 0, then it holds for uh, any alpha greater than okay, in okay, uh, any real number let us say greater than alpha. That is the first statement. Okay. So, in particular it holds for an integer m. Okay. So, any we can pick an integer from greater numbers greater than alpha. Okay. So, for the time being I am assuming that one holds for some real number alpha. Okay. So, then it holds for an integer greater than that. Okay. Uh, so, limit So, limit uh, z goes to a modulus of z minus a power m modulus of f of z is equal to 0. Okay. So, this implies that uh, we can we can increase the power by 1 more z minus a power m plus 1 f of z uh, the limit of that as z goes to a is also 0. Okay. So, um, this implies that z minus a power m f of z okay, has a removable singularity. Okay, uh, singularity at a. Okay, and since the limit of this function itself is 0 as z goes to a, we saw how to redefine functions at removable singularity. We will take the limit of that function as z goes to a. Okay, uh, and um, and so uh, this and z minus a power m f of z vanishes, i.e., is equal to zero. Okay, for considering the extended function, okay, is equal to zero at a. Okay, so that's how we redefine. Okay, so case one, uh, what could happen is f could be uh, identically 0. If z minus a power m f of z is 0, uh, one of the cases is that f could be identically 0. This is the uninteresting case, okay, in which case okay, uh, 1 holds, we consider 2 equations here. Okay. So, 1 holds for every alpha belongs to r. Okay. So, limit z goes to we started by assuming that it holds for one particular alpha okay. and uh, what we have concluded is that z minus a power m f of z in modulus is equal to 0 in the limit. Okay. So, that will allow us to uh, conclude in the case that uh, f is identically 0 that alpha uh, I mean for any alpha that uh, 1 holds. Okay. So, this is the uninteresting case, but what is uh, more interesting is that uh, if uh, f is not identically 0, okay, then z minus a power m f of z. Okay, we saw that it is already 0, the analytic extension of this is 0 at a. So, uh, has a 0 of order let us say k at a. This implies z minus a power m f of z is equal to z minus a power k 
times g of z okay and g of where g is analytic in b a r and g of a is non zero okay in some neighborhood of a uh, g is analytic and g of a is non zero okay so by subtracting let let okay let h equals m minus k okay so we will make uh, uh, from this equation what we can do is we can write this as z minus a power h f of z is equal to g of z okay so now uh, if if alpha is greater than h g is analytic okay so if alpha is greater than h then uh, limit z goes to a modulus of z minus a power alpha modulus of f of z is the modulus of g of z okay is the limit as z goes to a modulus of z minus a raised to alpha minus h modulus of g of z okay so and that is equal to uh, 0 because g is analytic at a g has some uh, limit g of a uh, and then modulus of z minus a alpha minus h raised to alpha minus h is 0 okay and likewise if alpha is strictly less than h then limit z goes to a modulus of z minus a power alpha modulus of f of z is equal to uh, limit z goes to a of modulus of g of z divided by modulus of z minus a power alpha minus or h minus alpha no? and that is infinity that limit is infinity. Okay? So, there is a divide h is integer notice h is note h is an integer. So, uh, in summary uh, we are able to conclude the following. So, if we assume that uh, one holds under the supposition that uh, this this limit one holds, we are able to conclude that there is an integral point h on the real line. Okay? So, there is an integral point h on the real line such that for anything less than h uh, two holds. Okay, and then for anything greater than h, one holds. Okay, so there is an integral divide here. Okay, uh, and then so it's the first conclusion. Okay, and then likewise, if if we assume that suppose two holds, one can likewise show suppose two holds, one can likewise show that there is an integral divide on the real line, uh, for which two holds for every uh, integer less uh, every number a uh, real number less than h and uh, one holds for every uh, real number greater than h okay so i'll uh, i'll show that okay so suppose two holds for some alpha okay uh, then it holds for smaller alpha that's because uh, you know if things tend to infinity okay and you are you are decreasing the power of uh, z minus a okay so then um, the modulus is I, I mean the modulus of f of z is competing with the modulus of z minus a power alpha and is anyway tending to infinity now if you reduce the power of the quantity which which becomes smaller okay the competition uh, is more fierce in the sense that or the competition is uh, you know pretty much uh, winning for f of z so it becomes even more uh, uh, in modulus okay so this limit uh, for alpha less than that particular or a quantity less than that particular alpha uh, uh, okay is still tends to infinity okay so then it holds for smaller alpha that's easy okay and hence uh, for some integer 
n less than alpha really. Okay. So, uh, then once again we can do the same analysis then z minus a power n f of z similar analysis okay. so has a pole of order l at. Okay. So, that is because uh, the modulus of z minus a power n times modulus of f of z in limit is equal to infinity okay. uh, and so this function has a pole okay let's call the order to be l okay so then what we know is that uh, letting letting h equals n plus l like we have done for the uh, other case okay uh, we find one holds if alpha is greater than h okay so i'm writing the conclusion uh, it's easy to argue like we have done here okay like we have done all of here. Okay. So, um, one holds if alpha is greater than h and two holds if alpha is less than h. Once again here h is an integer notice h is defined to be n plus l. Okay. And uh, once again on the real line we have a divide at h for alpha less than h we have that two holes and then alpha greater than h one holes. Okay. So, there are based on this analysis there are if we assume that one holds then there is a integral divide on the real line where one holds for uh, you know values greater than that integer and two holds for values less than that integer. Okay. And likewise if we assume two holds for some alpha the same kind of situation uh, prevails. Okay. So, uh, 1 and 2 are mutually related uh, the, the, the two kinds of limits that I stated earlier are related in this fashion. Okay. So, there are three cases based on this analysis case 1 um, uh, condition 1 holds for all alpha belongs to R i e Okay, f is identically 0. Okay, that could be a case. Um, if f is analytic in uh, a deleted neighborhood of or um, there is an integer. The second case is there is an integer that is with the suppositions. Okay. So, there is an integral divide. Okay. So, there is an integer h such that 1 holds for condition 1 holds for uh, any alpha greater than h and condition 2 holds for alpha uh, less than h for any alpha less than h. Okay. And then there is a case 3 we saw that if 1 holds 2 should hold and if 2 holds 1 should hold okay. unless there is case 1 where uh, one holds for everything. Okay. So, case 3 is that neither one nor two holds. In the neighborhood of uh, A. Okay. So, what that is telling is that neither does f tend to uh, infinity in modulus near A, nor does uh, nor does uh, f have a 0 of course, at a okay, uh, nor does f have a removable singularity okay. uh, and um, f of course, we are assuming is not identically 0 which is the uninteresting case. Okay. So, in this kind of scenario uh, what, what really uh, one can say is that f, uh, f is oscillating in its values uh, in small neighborhoods around a. So, if you consider a small enough neighborhood uh, they f could uh, be possibly very large or possibly very small, but both the kind of behaviors should exist. Maybe it sh it tends to one limit and then uh, there is a subsequence uh, which we can consider in the neighborhood uh, which tends to some limit and then there is another subsequence in the neighborhood which tends to yet another limit. Okay. So, that uh, that can be uh, a possibility that is the case 3. Okay. So, neither 1 nor 2 holds which means 
uh, yeah, uh, so, so that is the behavior like I explained. Okay. But uh, we can make a very strong statement in this direction okay, uh, of the behavior of f in case 3 okay, and that is the Cassurati Weierstrass theorem. So, uh, I will um, I will first call case 3, we will give case 3 a name, uh, an isolated singularity. Okay, uh, of type 3 okay, of the type in case 3 is called an essential singularity. Okay, so, that is that is the definition of an essential singularity. Also, um, okay, so notice that case 1 is uninteresting in the sense that it is well a trivial case where f is identically 0. Okay. Uh, poles and poles and zeros okay, fall into case 2. What I mean by that is if f has a 0 uh, or if f has a, a, a pole okay uh, then then case 2 holds okay even if it has a removable singularity uh, then um, then case 2 holds okay so uh, uh, we saw that okay so there is an integral divide in the case of poles the divide is at the integer which is the order of the pole okay and uh, in the case of zeros the divide is at the uh, 0 the order of the 0 at, at a. Okay. In the case of removable singularity well it depends, um, it depends on the limit as z goes to a of f of z. Okay. So, limit z goes to a f of z uh, could be 0 which uh, will uh, which will actually uh, then uh, give us a case where the order of the 0 will matter. If the limit z goes to a f of z is non 0 Okay, then the divide, uh, the integral divide, is uh, is really at at h equals zero. Okay, so um, so uh, removable singularities and poles, okay, and zeros fall in case two. Okay, and then uh, everything else, in some sense, uh, well, uh, everything else is case three. If neither one nor two holds, then uh, then we have what is called an essential singularity. Okay, so. Uh, we will see more about the behavior of uh, a function which is analytic in a neighborhood of a and it has an uh, isolated essential singularity at a uh, further okay so uh, we'll particularly state the state and prove the cassurati weierstrass theorem